what is going on cardano community happy friday i hope you guys are ready for the weekend my name is farid in today's video i want to give you guys some brief cardano updates surrounding the development on the network now if it's your first time stopping by here on this channel this is going to be the cardano scoop series i've got a fully dedicated playlist for these types of updates if you appreciate them make sure to check that out as a part of today's updates, first things first, we're going to dive into the weekly development report, which is released every single Friday, and then we're going to kind of dissect that a little bit. Following that, we're going to talk a little bit about the Lace Wallet, as well as some of the top engagers and top traded tokens, as well as the top farms on the MinSwap protocol. Following that, we're going to jump into some updates surrounding JPEG.store and their newly released collection offers feature. And they also just released a pretty cryptic tweet here that I want to go ahead and review with you guys, potentially highlighting the release of the JPEG store token. After that, we're going to talk a little bit about Liquid and the fact that they now have Jet support online. And then we're going to close out by talking about GoKey and their new ISPO model. Now, if it's your first time stopping by the channel, my goal is to provide you guys here in the community with the latest news, tutorials, and reviews. I'm also a single stake pool operator operating the official DAP Central stake pool, which has just minted its very first block. And if you guys want to support me on my mission to educate the Bardock Cardano community, then consider delegating with the stake pool. On top of that, I will be giving away the Meld and Genius Seal tokens between the month of March through May. And so if you guys want to get a piece of that action, make sure to check out my fully dedicated video about that giveaway. All right, without taking up any more time, let's go ahead and jump into the very first topic for today, which is going to be the weekly development report released by IOG. Starting from the right hand side, we now have 117 projects being built on Cardano or being launched on Cardano with over 1200 being actively worked on. We're now at 7.92 million native tokens with over 70,000 policies and more than 5,900 Plutus scripts. In closing, we've got more than 62.62.6 million total transactions on the network. And I just want to go back to the number of Plutus scripts there, which is currently sitting at 5,979. As a part of my previous video, we talked about the fact that the Plutus V2 script number was previously at 797. And so we now have an additional 18 scripts used utilizing the Valso hard fork, bringing us to a total of 815 of those Plutus V2 scripts. On the left hand side, we now have a new version of the Ouroboros network and the Ouroboros network protocols being published with a new version of the Lace Wallet adopting SIP30 or the DAP connector. Right below that, we've got a Hydra node update as well, which will be a layer two scaling solution. Next, we're going to jump straight over into the Lace official Twitter. As it reads here, kind of piggybacking off of that um, prior announcement surrounding the DAP connector with the latest version of Lace, which is 0.6.0 .0 release, you can now try out the DAP connector and interact with Cardano DAPs. Use your ledger hardware wallet and switch between the preview and pre prod testing networks. So if you guys are not aware, this is going to be a wallet being developed by IOG, which is one of the founding members and key drivers of the development of Cardano. Now, this wallet was initially just released, I believe, on the pre-prod network, and it's now available on the preview network as well. As a part of my prior updates, I mentioned the fact that whenever they're actually going to move over to mainnet, they've now got some features in place to make that a seamless transaction. So if you're already testing the Lace wallet, you're not going to have to do any additional steps in order to switch from um, pre-prod or preview over to the main net version and so moving right along i want to talk about the projects with the top top engagement excuse me within the last seven days coming in at number one we've got singularity net which has been pretty hyped up um, given the recent ai news and it continues to be one of the top engaging projects we've also got number two the hosky token followed by chilled kongs which has had a little bit of drama here within the nft space over the course of the last few days in which we've seen the floor price for this nft collection drop quite significantly now i do also want to add here as a disclaimer that generally speaking we have seen the um, liquidity within the cnft space kind of dry up over the course of the last two to three weeks 
Now, on the other hand, we've seen the um, liquidity within the DeFi protocols grow up and actually make a brand new high. So it looks like people may be shifting or rotating out of CNFTs and moving those assets or funds into DeFi protocols. Coming in at number four, we've got Tap Tools. Number five, Drip Drops. Number six, Cody, followed by Fluid Tokens, which has just announced all of the pools or all the community pools that will be available for their Fluid Token ISPO. If I'm not mistaken, that should be kicking off on March 26th of this year, in which we're going to see, I believe, the 10 community pools with an additional five or six reserve pools coming online, as well as four pools for the ambassador and then one pool hosted by the actual Fluid Tokens team. Now, coming in right behind them, we've got Wing Riders, Liquid Finance and Muesli Swap. That's going to do it there for the top projects with the highest engagement within the Cardano ecosystem. Moving right along into the top projects with the um, most trading volume within the last 24 hours on MinSwap. At number one, we've got none other than AGIX, which again, just had the highest engagement on the prior chart. We've also got the new net token. So coming in at number one and number two, we've got two AI um, related protocols, which doesn't surprise me. Coming in at number three, we've got Jed followed by the MinSwap token, which has been on a run lately, given all of the great news and positive news that we've seen coming to this DEX. Right behind them, we've got the Kopi token, which has also done a really, really good job of uh, moving in the right direction over the course of the last few weeks with the announcement of the Kopi MVPs being released as a part of Q2. Right behind Cornucopia, so we've got World Mobile token, followed by the Ape Society, which is going to be having their citizens of the Ape Society NFT sale over the course of the next few weeks. So I wouldn't be surprised if we begin to see the society token kind of climb up the ranks here all the way until the maybe number two to three spot here over the course of the next few days. Again, I think that all of their mints have done extremely well. So far, we've seen the actual Ape NFTs themselves, as well as the cabins, which all sold out quite quickly. Right behind Ape Society, we've got Meld, followed by AADA Finance, and then very lastly, we've got the Clay Token. Moving into the next section here, I want to quickly highlight some of the top APR farms if you're a liquidity provider looking to earn some passive ADA. Now, as always, I want to make sure that you guys do understand the risks that come with impermanent loss, and I always recommend that you do your own research before participating in any parts of DeFi. With the highest APR farm right now, we've got the ADA slash Jet Pair, followed briefly by ADA slash Indy. And then again, we've got ADA slash AGIX or Singularity Net, as well as ADA slash New Net. So it seems like those four or so projects are really, really getting a lot of love here within the ecosystem, um, just generally speaking. Coming in at number five, we've got the ADA slash Min Farm, followed by ADA LQ, and then we've got ADA Makasi, as well as ADA C Netta. If you've never heard of Aneta BTC, they have just actually wrapped the first ever Bitcoin on Cardano, which I covered as a part of my prior Cardano Scoop update. So if you guys want to find out more about what they're doing, what they're bringing to Cardano, as well as their upcoming testnet, which should be released as a part of March of this year, then make sure to check that video out. Now, I'm going to quickly just kind of run through the rest here. We've got AADA, again, Society, followed by Cornucopius. And then we've got the Worthless Hosky Token, followed by World Mobile, Meld, Shen, and the Pavia Metaverse. That is going to do it for some of the general developments there surrounding the Cardano ecosystem. Next, I want to talk to you guys about JPEG.store. Now, in my prior updates, I talked about the fact that we now have some competitors coming for JPEG. And so right now we've got Plutus.art, which just launched and they're continuing to grow as they're getting more and more listings on their platform. We've also got Flipper.io on the horizon, which should be releasing very soon as well. Now, what I want to mention here specific to the JPEG.store platform is a new feature that was just released yesterday on March 9th, which is going to be called the collection offers. So it reads here as a buyer, you'll be able to submit an offer to buy any item in a specific collection and all owners can accept your offer. While as a seller using this new feature, if there's a collection offer on an item that you own, you can instantly sell it for that amount. So this is going to be a really cool feature here, allowing for almost instantaneous trades to take place as long as there is a willing buyer on the other end. 
Now, as it states here, if you're a buyer, you basically have to just be willing to take any NFT as a part of that collection. But if you're willing to do that, right, and you've got a matching seller, um, they can basically come in and instantly sell their asset to you for that given price. So let me just quickly show you guys what this looks like. I'm going to jump over here into jpeg.store. And we're currently looking at the cabins by the Ape Society. Now, I actually hold one of these NFTs in this wallet that we're connected to right now. And if I wanted to, as a buyer, I could come in and put in a new collection offer. Now, this would basically allow for me to purchase any of these NFTs if a person is willing instantly. Now, since I don't want to actually do that, and there's already been an instant offer put in already for 400 ADA, as a seller, I could quickly come in here, click on this instant sell button, select whichever NFT I have, if I have multiple here, and actually sell that for the 400 ADA. Now, what's been interesting is that we, have, we already have a floor price here, which as you guys can see is 700. However, the instant sell price right now is at about 400. And so as a general rule of thumb, at least what I've seen so far, has just been kind of people using this feature to lowball the entire collection. But what would actually make sense would be to see maybe somewhere around 700 to 715 um, to actually make this enticing for somebody who's looking to come and make an instant sale. And so hopefully we'll begin to see a lot more projects or a lot more collections utilizing this feature. But I did want to take a second here to point this out to the community. Moving right along into the next update here surrounding jpeg.store. And I actually mentioned this in my prior video was the fact that they had uh, given us a sneak peek that they might be bringing on a dollar sign JPEG token as a governance token for the JPEG store marketplace. Now, we haven't gotten any specific clarity, nor have we actually seen a token launched on chain. That said, I believe um, they might actually be doing something in the background. And so as you guys can see here, there's this little teaser video, which is a little bit cryptic, but it's an airdrop here of some military gear, which I think is a, a synonym, right? Or a comparison to what they might be doing here for the community very, very soon. Now, who will actually be eligible for this airdrop? I have no idea. Um, there hasn't been any clarity whatsoever, but this tweet was made in response to this particular tweet here, which was the highlighting of the actual JPEG store token. Now, what could this actually be used for? I think there are a few different use cases, but I think number one, this could potentially give us a discount as a user on the platform. Um, and then number two, it might actually um, give us the ability to vote on certain um, features being implemented on the platform. So those are just two simple use cases there that I wanted to mention. But this is going to be very similar to what we're seeing with Flipper.io, which is going to bring bringing on their own Flip token. Similarly, we are now seeing the gamification on the Plutus.art platform in which they're basically providing users with XP that they can then use on the platform by listing, purchasing, and just interacting with the marketplace in general. So I think that this is being done here. This airdrop um, is being done here um, in uh, not comparison, but in the order to make sure that they're staying competitive with all the other builders innovating um, in terms of engaging with the uh, community. That is going to do it, though, for the updates on JPEG. And let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Um, have you guys seen any of the JPEG store tokens floating around? Am I missing something here? Um, but it does look like they will be releasing this token here very shortly. As soon as they do, and as soon as we have actually got some record of it on chain, you can definitely bet that I'm going to release an update here covering that for you guys in the community. Now, if you guys are enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you guys could tap that like button. It really does help to get this content out to other members within the Cardano community. And I do appreciate you for sticking along and watching this video. Moving into the third topic for today, we're going to be talking about the liquid protocol. So let me jump back over here. And what I want to highlight is the fact that they now have support for the JED stablecoin. If you don't know what JED is, this is a stablecoin which is algorithmic and over collateralized, which was brought onto Cardano in the very first week of February. This was also at the same time that the um, Liquid Protocol actually launched on the mainnet. Um, and since then, we've actually seen them adopt JED as an asset that you can now lend and borrow with. So it reads here, we are thrilled to announce the successful launch of Liquid's JED market as well as the addition of QJED as a collateral for the ADA market. 
So if I jump over to the next tweet here, you guys will see here that the um, Cody team, which is the driving arm behind Jed, also released a fully dedicated article with Dwayne Cameron, who's going to be the founding member and CEO of Liquid, basically highlighting the different use cases for the Jed token on the Liquid protocol. So jumping over into this actual article here, and if you guys want to read this in its entirety, I'll leave the link to it down in the description, but it is a little bit lengthy and um, I want to kind of keep this update brief. Now it reads here, Jed can lend, but I think they meant to say users can lend, borrow and earn interest on their stablecoin holdings at the liquid finance protocol. Jet suppliers and borrowers also accrue LQ rewards as a part of the user distribution and will be able to easily track and claim these rewards soon. So now you can actually go ahead and provide Jed and you can borrow Jed, right, if you want to do that. Um, but either way, you'll be able to earn rewards by providing liquidity to the protocol. Moving into the next story here for the liquid finance team they also have a liquidation bot that can be run by members in the community in order to earn rewards now if you don't know what a liquidation is it's basically the process in which your assets um, are force forcibly sold um, due to a mismatch right of the actual value of the assets that you hold versus your collateral that you put in on the platform so it reads here instructions for setting up and configuring the liquid liquidation bot if i jump over into this page that is linked as we get as we can see here we get access to a docker image which basically allows us to run the actual liquidation bot now i'm not too technical here when it comes to docker images um, but it does look like, like it is a simple process and if you have any questions you can jump over into their discord in order to get some help from the team that's going to do it for updates there on liquid the very last platform that i want to talk to you guys about is going to be go keep if you've never heard of GoKey before, they're going to be a platform built on Cardano, allowing for peer-to-peer -peer real estate financial transactions to take place. So let me just quickly jump over into their website here. And if you guys are not familiar with them, you can go ahead and find out more about them by heading over to GoKey.network. Now, what I want to mention as a part of this update here is going to be the fact that they are now um, shifting away from how they're operating their ISPO. If you're not familiar, they kicked off their ISPO, I believe, as a part of the summertime of 2022. So it says here, introducing a fresh take on the Cardano ISPO staking model. Jumping into the actual article, which is available on Medium, I'm just I'm going to quickly read a few of these sections. So starting at the top, early in summer of 2022, GoKey launched its Cardano stake pool and welcomed and welcomed ADA holders to stake their coins with them. With ADA trading in the range of about 50 to 70 cents at the time and with growing interest in GoKey's vision for on-chain peer-to-peer real estate finance on Cardano, we liked our odds of success in utilizing the ISPO model to support the project development. Now, as we all know, that price of ADA didn't necessarily last for too long. As summer turned into crypto winter, it became increasingly difficult to break even and to financially justify the ongoing time, effort, and expense involved in operating the stake pool. I can definitely speak this from experience, especially being a brand new SPO. Um, it does cost to run the servers or your hardware. And then if you got somebody managing it, that's additional cost and overhead as well. Now, they've got a pretty cool picture here of the stats surrounding their stake pool, which does appear to be um, growing in the positive direction. But again, due to the fact that the price of ADA has declined quite dramatically, the amount of ADA that they're actually raising as a part of their stake pool is valued at a lot less. Now, scrolling down, it reads, as participants and observers of Cardano's impressive network of stake pool operators or SPOs, it has become increasingly clear that new approaches are needed and to better align the interest and incentives of SPOs with those of the delegators. Therefore, the Goki stake pool is currently operating as a 99% margin ISPO. If you don't understand what the margin is, this is basically them taking 99% of the stake pool rewards that should normally be going to the delegators. And in exchange, they're going to be giving them the Goki token. Now, it reads here, for those who don't know, this means that the wallet staked to our pool will receive an allocation of Goki tokens in lieu of the ADA rewards they would normally receive from the protocol. The quantity of Goki tokens earned is 
in proportion to the quantity of ADA delegated. So if you're delegating a lot more ADA, you're gonna earn a lot more of the Goki tokens and vice versa. Currently, 0.15 Goki for each ADA staked per epoch is given out every five days, plus a multiplier for every epoch staked to the stake pool. Now, what they're gonna be um, basically suggesting now is gradually reducing the margin as they get more delegation into the pool. So as you can imagine, because people are not getting their full ADA rewards, there is um, an incentive for them somewhat um, not to join the pool. And so as they begin to give out the ADA rewards on top of the Goki token, their hope here is that they're gonna attract more delegators. So moving forward, this is their plan. At 5 million ADA delegated, they're gonna reduce their margin fee from 99% to 80%. Moving up to a 10 million ADA delegation, they're gonna remove their margin all the way down to 70%. At 20 million, their margin will, will be reduced to 60%. And at 40 million ADA de delegated plus, the margin will be reduced all the way down to 50%. We've designed the above reward structure with this in mind, pledging to aggressively cut margin at 5 million ADA stake, and then to again reduce margin by an additional 10% every time the amount of ADA delegated doubles. Again, all delegators will continue to receive the same amount of Goki tokens per the original formula, including per epoch bonus multipliers. We're simply sweetening the deal with ADA rewards that will be airdropped to your wallet automatically every epoch. And so again here, they're trying to restructure their ISPO in order to gain more attraction to the project while also becoming a little bit more sustainable. So go ahead and check this particular platform out. If you guys want to earn some of the Goki tokens, you can go ahead and join their stake pool. But that is going to bring us to a close for today's Cardano Scoop update. Again, I know that that was a brief one there. But we talked about Cardano development updates in which we talked about the weekly development report, updates coming to the Lace wallet, the top engagers, top traded tokens and top farms on the platform. We've also talked about JPEG.store, their new collection offers feature, as well as a sneak peek or a hint that we might be seeing the brand new JPEG.store token coming online very, very soon. After that, we talked about Liquid and their adoption of Jet, as well as their liquidation bot. And in closing, we wrapped up by talking about the new SPO model suggested by the GoKey team. If you guys found any of these updates discussed as a part of this video to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you guys could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me about Cardano or any of the protocols that we talked about today, then make sure to leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.